As I was growing my life, transforming my business, I copycat game changers. And what I found out was game changers were always attending another summit, a place where they can grow, a place where they can expand, and a place where they can network. So I myself did the exact same thing. And I looked up one day and I was that game changer. Not at the top of the game by some, but definitely not where I used to be. So if you're a game changer or you're striving to truly be a game changer, then you don't wanna miss the Wealth Summit. Me and my girl, Constance Carter, and a bunch of other amazing, brilliant individuals will be joining together on February 2nd, 2019 at Waterfront University Plaza Hotel. You don't wanna miss it. This is where transformation occurs. If you wanna get something new, you simply have to know something new. And I'll be sharing the tips, and secrets of how financial transformation occurs. How not only to make more money, but how to keep more money and how to grow money. How to grow your impact, how to grow, scale your business, how to attract more consumers, how to create a tribe, how to do those things that's gonna last a lifetime and help you write the legacy that you wanna write. But in order to get there, you have to be in the room. So I invite you, register, don't walk, but run. It is limited space and you definitely want to reserve your seat. I'll see you there. You're now tuned in to the Lady Charmaine live show and I'm your host, Lady Charmaine. And of course, this is a special hot topic edition because if you have not heard of Surviving R. Kelly, then you've probably been under a rock. And what we're getting ready to do, we have a psychotherapist here and guess what she's going to do? She's going to take you into the mind of a predator coming up right after this. And we're back with Hot Tops with Lady Charmaine, and we got another good show for you tonight. Tonight, joining me on the show, I have my husband, Joseph Bassett. He is my co-host tonight because we have a lot of questions for our guest tonight. Her name is Miss Margina Carter. She is a licensed psychotherapist specializing in matters of the mind, also mental health, and also the heart, marriage, and relationships. But tonight, she's going to be taking you through the mind of a psychopath. Well... Should I call him psychopath? But how about the mind of a predator? I want you to help me welcome Miss Margina Carter to the show. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me, and I'm so glad to be here tonight to educate everybody on the mind of a predator. Absolutely. Now, I know you, how long have you been in this field, Margina? Oh, I want to say it, it's been over 10 years. I can't even think at this point. But I want to say maybe like maybe 13 now. Mm -hmm. We're in 2019. So it's going on about 13 years. Okay. Okay. So about 13 years. What made you want to go into this particular field of the mind and especially dealing with sociopaths? Well, I, first for me, it's just interesting. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, I have an aunt and an uncle who both suffer from mental illness. So my aunt and uncle both have schizophrenia. Mm. And it was just always so interesting to me to hear my aunt respond to her voices or my uncle respond to voices. And it's an auditory hallucination. You often see someone on the street and you're like, who are they talking to? These are people who just hear voices. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I wanted to know what about the mind is so fascinating that can make us hear things see things, feel things that aren't there. And that's what pushed me to go into this field. Okay. Well, right now we are talking about R. Kelly. Surviving R. Kelly, it is the water cooler talk. It is the thing that has everybody talking over the past several days. It actually had 18.8 .8 million people actually watch the six-part series over the course of three days. And also the abuse hotlines has seen an increase in calls. And so we just wanted to talk about that because I know many of us were very disturbed. We were disturbed when we heard about him and Aliyah. 
You know, then we were disturbed when the video came out with him and the 14 year old girl. But at the time they could not identify what her age was. So he was able to get off. Now we actually have real victims that have come forward and they're telling their stories and not just victims, but also the parents of victims that are still trapped with R. Kelly. And so we see him getting more and more sinister, more and more sinister as he get a different girl and now he has more girls and now these girls are literally protecting him so let's go into to the mind of somebody like r kelly did you get a chance to watch surviving r kelly i watched many many clips and you know for me this is something that i deal with all the time especially um in a clinical setting and so i didn't even have to watch all of the um videos because for most people this seems so far-fetched and and for most people who don't see it it is far-fetched but sexual abuse predators Mm -hmm. pedophiles it's happening in everyday lives and it's something that people keep quiet about right 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 exactly so it's not a taboo that people think Mm mm-hmm So tell us about a person like R. Kelly, because if you haven't heard, you know, he was molested as a child by his sister and his sister used to lock him in the house as well. His brother, Carrie, ended up telling the story how his older sister ended up molesting the both of them. And so I wanted to to talk to you about that, not making any excuses for him, because it appears that the same thing that was done to him, he's doing to all of these other women. So take us through the mind of someone like R. Kelly. So, first, I think it's just important to educate before um, we even talk about um, the re-victimization. So, what R. Kelly suffers from is a psychiatric disorder, and it is pedophilia. Mm -hmm. Pedophilia is under the umbrella of paraphilia, Mm. right? So, paraphilia is where you'd find, like, fetishes, a foot fetish, a voyeur, someone who spies on people while they're getting naked. They get aroused by that essentially is categorized by sexual arousal and gratifications or fantasies from atypical or extreme sexual behaviors, Mm -hmm. right? So that is something he suffers from. It's a a psychiatric disorder, and it can be triggered by him being violated or abused himself. It can be triggered by actually experiencing sexual abuse. It, It essentially a cycle. So if this was something that I experienced or it happened to me as a child during my developmental years, it unfortunately shapes the way that I view things or the way that I feel and can um, potentially, and in his case, push you into a mental disorder where essentially now he is a pedophile Mm. and he was abused by his sister who was also a pedophile. Mm. Right. Right. So, that, I mean, that, that is, it, it, it just goes in so many ways. But now, how do you go from being, okay, you got pedophilia, and then now we have him known as a predator. And so he looks like, to me, from what I see, he likes a certain age group because he can definitely pick them out. He knows when somebody's like 17 years old, right on that cusp of being legal, depending on what state you're in. In Illinois, come to find out, 17 is the legal age. You know, California is 18, but he's like right on that cusp. And just like the young lady, um, Azriel, he was able to pull her out of the audience at one of his concerts, and she was the ripe age of 17. So can you really define to us what a predator is? So a predator is someone who preys, right? And even when you think about, when we talk about predators, we talk about animals, they prey. Mm -hmm. Meaning that I see something, I want it, and there's a specific type. In order to be a predator, there has to be a victim. When I have a prey, I have a specific type. Same when when we talk about animals. You know, if you're a carnivore, you prey for meat. Or, you know, so for R. Kelly, he has a certain type. And in order to execute his plan, the person has to have a Mm buy-in. So he knows exactly who to go for. You go for a younger person who doesn't quite understand. They see stardom. You sell them a dream. You groom them to believe and trust in you. And then you switch. Mm -hmm. 
And that is to pray. I get you, I tackle you, I take you down. Mm. Mm. Because when I was listening to, oh, there was a person on the show that was like a shadow. And they were talking like if you were a female that had it going on, he didn't really mess with you. You know, he, he'll mess with you a little bit, but you wouldn't be a person that he would deem to come into the house. But the people that he would mess with was more of the weak minded people, people that he basically can take advantage of. Even the parents, people that he knew that he could manipulate. What are some of the things that they look for to know that they can manipulate you? So you can look um, at things like mannerisms. Is this person confident? You know, and and in the age of Google, what do they have going for themselves? Mm -hmm. You can tell by someone dressing, their dress or their style, maybe what is their socioeconomic status? Can I flash money or can I exude this, you know, celebrity and lure them in? Mm -hmm. Are they vulnerable? When I have certain conversations, can I manipulate them? And if you, and if you're a predator or you know exactly what you're looking for, mm-hmm. because, and you're only going to seek out the type that will allow you to execute your plan. Interesting, because you could tell that he definitely does have a type, and you have to be at least 17 years and under. But the thing that really surprised me was that he did have a woman who was 35 years old and another woman that was 33. But the problem was they, they were mentally weak. And I think my husband has some questions for you as well. Joe, you got a question? Yeah, just uh, also was mentioned in one of the um, families, they mentioned about a Stockholm Syndrome uh, with regards to, it seems like these women protect R. Kelly, even though they're being abused by him. I, I ju- it was just very confusing to watch, and maybe you can go into some detail regarding that. Yeah, so Stockholm Syndrome, and first I just want so I explain what Stockholm Syndrome is, but I want to paint a picture so that people can get an idea. Everyone knows someone, a woman, who is with a man who abuses them. And everyone cannot understand, well, why is she not leaving? Why is she not going back? Right. Well, why is she continuing to go back? She leaves and she goes back. Right? So that essentially you developed what we call a learned helplessness helplessness Hmm. right so you are in the stage of a victim and you don't know how to get out of it right so once when we talk about Stockholm syndrome the only difference between someone you know who is in in, and all this is domestic violence but when um essentially it's more cult-like versus individualistic okay and so Stockholm syndrome is mental captivity this is when the victim aligns with the predator. So they develop feelings, emotional attachment, and there's a sense of gratification or gratitude that they give to the predator for keeping them alive. It's like, thank you, because you could have killed me. Mm. And it's a survival tactic. Essentially, if I align with you, then I can stay alive another day. Gotcha. And it doesn't make sense at all, but it is the way for you to stay alive. So once you've been mentally captive, then the shackles can come off. There, there doesn't need to be locks on the door because you're not going to leave because mentally mm. you're, all, you're chained. Gotcha. I don't need to physically chain you anymore because now I have taking your mind and your mind is in my control. Right. Wow. That right there. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of, um, you know, when they talk about the elephants, you know, you know how, you know, the elephants, Margina. And when they, they talk about I can't. the elephants, what they do, they take a baby elephant and uh-huh. they put a chain around the baby elephant's mm-hmm. ankle. And the baby elephant, he yep. tries to get out of the chain, but he can't. But then as he grows, he doesn't realize that he's strong enough to actually break the chain and get away. Because now mentally, he thinks that he can't mm-hmm. break the chain because he tried for so long. And you see that same thing. Remember on TMZ when Joyce Lynn and also Dominique was down in Beverly Hills and TMZ was able to get them on camera? 
R. Kelly was nowhere mm-hmm. around. His mm-hmm. people was nowhere around. But because R. Kelly had them mentally, he knew that they would return. Because he knew he had chains on their minds. That's why the young lady, Azriel, she wasn't able to leave Chicago because she was a flight risk. He knew he didn't have a strong enough hold mm-hmm. on her to allow her to go down there because she might end up running away. Mm-hmm. But the other two girls, yeah. he knew he had them. And, and that's why they were free to go. Once I have you mentally captive, you no longer need to be chained to the wall like the elephant. There's no need mm-hmm. because I have a chain on. I have a chain attached to your mind, and mind control is the strongest control ever. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, how does a person who has been, especially these girls, because because I have Lizette Martinez, she's going to be on the show tomorrow, and if you got a chance to watch it, then you know her. She was the Hispanic young lady that he had, and he had given her mononucleosis. Yeah. So she'll be on tomorrow night. How does a person like her and all the other victims? How do you start taking off those chains link by link mentally? The first thing is to have some sort of opening and some sort of clarity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And no one knows when that will come. You know, sometimes it it may be just a light shining or a smell and it reminds you of a family member. There needs to be a light bulb that goes off at any moment. You get that clear, like, oh, my God, this isn't okay. Mm -hmm. Right? And you'll often find times when people who have held captive, something went off or they thought, well, you know what, if I, Maybe my mom, or if I don't get out, you know, or they see family members on the news, things like that. There has to be a light bulb and a switch that goes on. Mm -hmm. And no one really knows when that will be because essentially it's a mind captivity. So there has to be a, a, at some moment where there's clarity where the person can come out of that. Essentially, it's like being on drugs. Like I have to have a moment of sobriety and it's like, okay, now I have to find a way to get out. But if, if, if you're surrounded by that, you're, and if you're with other women who are in it too, then, then it's very difficult to have a moment of clarity because you don't have anyone going against it. Right, right, right. And, and, that's, the, and that's the hard part. The hard part is essentially the healing begins once you leave. But as long as you're there, it's so difficult. Family members have to really fight. To, to get people out of that. Even again, we talked about domestic violence mm-hmm. relationships where there's a one on one. How many times, you know, broken nose, broken bones, mm-hmm. and they still go back mm-hmm. until maybe he hit the child and it's like, okay, I can't take this anymore. Right? But again, when it's very difficult when your mind is controlled because essentially you are just a thing inside of a shell. You are not even there anymore. You're not even yourself. And so how, how am I making decisions for myself when I'm not even myself? Wow. Mm. Wow. Mm. Uh, question question yeah. for you also. Is, is, is there like preemptive things that we can see or signs while, while you know, in adolescence or something to, to kind of equip, you know, people for predators like R. Kelly? You know, things that, I don't know, we can give our children as far as tools or... You mentioned something about, you know, the Instagram thing. There's, you know, the, 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 the postings. What, what can we do to give them some tools to help them avoid or at least combat some of, that, some of those mind games? Well, essentially, you need to be a mentally healthy person because there, there is really, it's very difficult to dodge a predator if you're a prey. That's what they go for. So if you are someone who has it, you have to be mentally strong and you have to be educated. You have to know how predators present. Predators usually are always high profile, especially when it's, when it's a, when it's a predator that is close to you. Oftentimes, you know, we see people who are attacked on the street, right? But Essentially, most often when people are abused, it's by someone we trust. Mm -hmm. So you have to be mindful. Okay, do I get an eerie feeling? Research people. Do research and understand that a lot of times, you know, we will think, oh, it it wouldn't happen to me. I'm a different kind of person. But learn from others' mistakes. If if you heard about it before, Mm -hmm. then if it happened to them, 
Trust me, it can happen to you no matter how strong you are. Because if you think that it can't happen to you, then right there you are someone who's, who is naive. And that you are have a weaker mind. So it is really about being mindful, understanding what predators look like, understand how they present. And oftentimes predators are not the, they don't look creepy. Right. Right. Yeah. They don't look creepy. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, they're not the one that you see standing in the corner. They're oftentimes attractive mm-hmm. because that's how they attract people. They're oftentimes very flamboyant, the mm-hmm. life of the party, mm-hmm. because that is the way that they lure you in. And and you have to be mindful of when people are coming towards in your life. How do they present? Right. If someone is always the life of the party, that is not confidence. Hmm. There's something underlying there because everyone has a moment where they just lay back. Right. So you have to look at individuals, look at people's character, and do some research on right. people's history. Ask hmm. about their family. There's red flags when you're someone who has been abused. Not saying that you will become a predator, but you have a higher likelihood of becoming a pedophile if you experience sexual abuse. Ask about their past. What was your history like? You have to do. You have to really do your research when there are people coming into your life because you may never know what you're getting. But here's my question for you, Margina. These girls were so young that they didn't think to do research because he got them when their minds was young. Their brains are still growing. They they haven't yet hit adulthood because they're just now coming out of adolescence. So he was able to get them at a time where they were just infatuated with who he was and, oh, my God, that's R. Kelly and what he can do for me because he had a way of picking out the inner. It's like he mm-hmm. could sniff them out. He, he never met the girl, but he knows she's an aspiring singer. You know, almost all the girls were in some type of entertainment or just infatuated with him. The one that was more so infatuated with them was the girl Asante, but all the other ones seemed to want to have been in the industry. One girl was at a video shoot. You know, it seems like he has a way of mm-hmm. doing that because, like I said, even Lil Azriel, she was a professional singer at a young age. She just happened to be at the concert with her dad, but he, out of all those people, he picked that baby out. And what is it about these women or do women give off something for a predator to know that I can manipulate this one? Because he has his pick of the litter, Mm -hmm. but he was able to pick out one that he knew that he can get. And the thing is that he's so smart and so smooth. He was able to get these girls out from under two parent households. Right. It's not like it was girls that was rebellious where they were just out there on the street. They didn't have a mom. They didn't have a dad. He got girls that came from two parent households and was able to manipulate the parents as well. How do you think that happens? Number one, as parents, we have a duty to protect, Mm -hmm. but our duty to protect can only go as far as what we know. Just because I'm a parent don't mean that I've been to, was exposed to that type of world. A lot of mm-hmm. people shy away from dark stories, and they're often are not as knowledgeable as you would think. So when that kind of thing happens, it's trial and error. I'm going to try this one and see if it works. Okay, well, her mom stood in the way because her mom knew about pedophiles. She, she researched it. You know, her dad with someone who had a little bit of a street smart. Okay, I can't get that one. Let me pick and pick and pick, and somebody's going to land. Mm-hmm. Some parent is going to be a little bit more trusting. Some parents are going to be sheltered. Maybe they came from a different uh, socioeconomic status, or their parents shelter them. A lot of time when you, you know, and, and this is coming from a therapist who treat people who higher socioeconomic status, you know, yes, you have the education, Mm -hmm. school smarts based on your profession, but a lot of times you don't research mental health issues. You don't research dark stories. And so your level of trust, because we're, we're taught to see the good in people Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oftentimes. And if you haven't experienced so much bad and a lot of good things have been coming in your life, then you look at things differently and you're more susceptible to predators. And, and, and that's the difficult part is, is that it doesn't, it doesn't matter how good of parents you are or lack of. It is about the parents' experience. Were they someone who has been abused themselves? If they were someone abused, then maybe they have a radar going off. Okay, I didn't, I, I'm someone who is 
um, extremely, my red, my red flag is up. So any man that's looking at my daughter is a no. Mm-hmm. I'm not, not letting my daughter go anywhere because I know that. So it's also about parents' experience. So hopefully all of this is going on pushes people to listen, to understand, to look at signs. Understand that just because I'm an educated person doesn't mean that I'm educated on predators. Right, mm. right. Good point. Very, because this is the interesting point. Both parents on both sides, they all knew R. Kelly's past. Mm. But because he was able to get off, because basically the 14-year-old girl couldn't be proven because it took them, what, about five years to go to court. So she's no, no, no longer 14. I think she was like 20. And, you know... And she doesn't look like she's 14 anymore. So the age was definitely a factor because the parents did not come forward to say that, yes, that's my daughter. She was 14 at the time of the tape. So now everybody heard about it. Both parents heard about it. But do you think they might have been a little more starstruck because it's R. Kelly? So you kind of like let certain things sweep under the rug because you kind of want your daughter to be a star. And so, you know, we'll kind of let that pass because he may have grown past it. You know, everybody's had their issues and troubles and struggles. And so he probably don't have that struggle anymore. He probably didn't, you know, go a little bit deeper or even bring it up to him. What do you think? Well, I would say this. I... Again, because, and I think for people who are looking, who's watching these documentaries, and this is not something that they see on a daily basis, it will, it will make a light bulb go off and say, oh, maybe they were starstruck. Mm -hmm. But you will be surprised how many people have the invincible complex Mm -hmm. that it's not me, it's them. Mm -hmm. How many people will date someone that beat their girlfriend? And will think that it doesn't happen to them. Wow. Oh, well, he was in a, he was abusive to her. It's not going to be me. How many people will go after a position? Oh, I'm taking this position because it's a good high paying job. But you look at the reviews and everyone says I was so stressed out. They robbed me of (laughs) my money. They didn't pay me on time. But it's like, no, that's them. It's not. That will be them. That's not me. Everyone has this invincible complex to us. And we have to understand that nobody is exempt from a predator. Nobody is exempt from people who pray. And you have to understand that just as well as it was them, it can be you. So maybe there's that idea that, yeah, he, he was a star, but in the end, there are a lot of people that come into therapy where they have, it's been a cycle. This person come in and he's, and you know, you've been abusive to your last girlfriend, your girlfriend before that, your girlfriend. and, And, and then they know each other. Oh, I cheated on my wife with this woman now I'm with her and she she's upset that I cheated on her well, here's the deal it, 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 that's the deal mm. the same way you know you say oh you you lose them is the same way you get them but that's the same way when it comes to predators if it was somebody before you it's somebody after you and it can be you as well nobody is exempt at all nobody is off the table mm. everyone is always susceptible to being prey through that you know w- one thing when you were talking one thing that that really just stands out to me how r kelly still has a fan base mm-hmm. even though this has been exposed even though you know we, we we see all this stuff happening it's almost like we're feeding his his um his ego we're feeling f- feeding the narcissism that that that's apparent but we don't even we, we try to separate him and the music, and and we I, it seems like as a we're making excuses to try to keep him at a level of admiration. Why, why, why do we why do we do that? Why why do people still do that? Maybe not look at what it is. I think people, and this is the sad part, and this is how we become prey. People don't want to believe that he's doing something so heinous. People don't want to believe that someone came and shot up a synagogue. It happened. And it can happen to someone that you thought that you knew that you don't know. In the end, an artist is a craft right. that is different from an individual. When people have mental illness, the last thing that go is their craft. When someone has um, Alzheimer's, the last thing that go is their craft because essentially that's separate from you. Hmm. You have to separate the craft from the person and understand that 
yeah, you may like the music, but every time you buy into the music, you feed and you continue to pay for the lifestyle of the person. And accept that some people that we idolize and some people that we think are good do really bad things. And oftentimes people are buying into this music or even, you know, continue to keep him in um, high regard because it's uncomfortable for them to accept what happened. A lot of times we will create, keep this image of someone in our mind because it's our defense mechanism mm -hmm. versus of thinking about the victim. It's our defense mechanism. I'm going to keep him in my mind this way because I don't want to see him that way. Mm -hmm. So essentially it's about them and it's not about the victim. Wow. That's and that's exactly what predators want and they like. And that's how predators get away with it because, again, it is about myself. I'm not going to say anything about it. This is how children get um, children are abused for so long, and parents keep it quiet because I don't want anyone to feel like to say that I'm I didn't protect my child or I was a bad parent or I don't want to, you know, I want to play his music because I loved his music. Versus looking at the fact that someone who is abusing people created that music. Mm -hmm. So you can't separate the two. But again, oftentimes people have difficulty with uncomfortable topics. They have difficulty with things that are not considered the norm. You know what, Margina? I saw a video just recently, and R. Kelly has said on the video, he was like, you know, it's too late. He's been doing this for 30 years. He said his music has been injected into the world. And it was almost like he was saying how his music, his what? His music has been injected uh -huh. into the world. His music has. And it, I was saying it's almost like his music has people in a trance because many people don't realize that his music basically talks about his actions of pedophilia because he puts his actions in mm. his music. But a lot of people say they separate the man from the music, but you can't separate the man from the music when he puts his actions into his music. You see what I'm saying? And it's almost like he knows that because he makes good music, it has people in the trance because he said it's already been injected into the people. That's what he said. Yeah, I, that, that to me is very like grandiose thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's very much so true versus we listen to music all day. They talk about bees and hoes and beating up your girlfriend and mm. NFL players beating wives down and then people are still following them. Mm -hmm. They'll get more followers. Mm. You know, so, so again, it, it's less about him versus the dysfunction and the unhealthiness of people's minds. Right. And the lure and the attraction of unhealthiness. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. the person, you know, you're a motivational speaker. You get a whole lot less followers than the ones that were fighting. Right? It's <laughs> about the unhealthy. And so if people would go and get therapy more and understand why I'm attracted to this kind of thing. Then maybe it would make sense. Okay, well, why I'm not going to listen to his music versus saying, oh, well, the music is great. But someone who is hurting people made the music. How can you separate? How can you separate it too? That thought from him, I think, is very grandiose, and and but and more so about him versus the fact that anyone who continues to buy into that, mm -hmm. then then to me, you're an abuser as well, because you're supporting it. It's, it's, you might as well just go put money in his bank account. Mm. You know, his, his music sales has um, even went up after. Uh, the series actually aired mm -hmm. and I was wondering did the music sales actually go up because people were trying to do research and wanted to go back now I wouldn't have bought it you know what I mean I would have never went and spent any money on his music but I'm just wondering if people decided to go back and now re-listen to the songs to see if they could see any clues in the music but didn't realize that it's giving R. Kelly a plus because he in his mind because of the way he thinks that people still love me but they probably he probably didn't realize people are actually doing research. I want to go back and I want to be nosy. Let me see what this song really says. I want to go back and see this one, mm. but don't realize in what they're doing and that they're feeding into his ego, basically saying you still can't bring me down because people still love me. You know, it's almost giving the opposite effect what they were trying to do. But a person like R. Kelly, it just feeds their ego. I think it's a little bit of both. I think that we, you know, the unfortunate thing is that we would like to believe that everyone's going to boycott him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we've seen 
some some stars. I've seen some comments where people have no problem still supporting him, hmm. right? So I think it is a little bit of both. Some people want to go back and they want to hear the songs and they want to research it. And some people are like, no, I'm going to continue to support him. I'm going to continue to support him. I love his music. So, you know, and again, the unfortunate piece is we have people out here who will, will have no problem with sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. It's not a problem. They feel like it's been something that's been done for years, and, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, she's an adult, or this person was young. Blame it on the parents. Blame it on the victim. Mm-hmm. Blame it on everyone else but the person who is doing it. And you know what? People will support him until he touched their daughter. Hmm, hmm. <laughs> and then when it becomes theirs, and then I think they're going to sing a whole nother song. Because as you see, you yeah. know, unfortunately, the Clarys, they support him. They still went to the concert until now. He mm-hmm. has their daughter. Yep. And yeah. then you have the Savages. Yeah, they yeah. supported him. They even wanted him to work with their daughter. But now he has their daughter. And so the conversation changes when it becomes your child that he ends up that he ends up with. Well, Margina, I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show, but I wanted to know if you can help us for those that are listening and watching, can you give us a few signs to look out for and that we can even take home to our own children, you know, because they're young, you know what I mean? So we want them to kind of know a few of the signs before you go, give us a couple signs that we could share um, with our family and with our friends and for those who are viewing right now. Yeah, so the number one sign is when there's, you feel a little bit controlled. Someone is telling you to do something that you're not really okay with. Maybe the touch is a little bit appropriate. Anytime anyone tells you to keep a secret, it's not right. Mm-hmm. So, and not only when someone tells you to keep a secret, you know it's not right, but when you see and someone look at you inappropriately, or, or maybe you're like, maybe I feel a little bit uncomfortable. You have to listen to your body. Oftentimes our body will reject mm-hmm. certain things, but we ignore it like, oh, maybe it was just me. Maybe I'm nervous, but no, there's something that touch was inappropriate. Even if it was a handshake, look at the small signs. Did it linger? Hmm. What did you feel when there was a so-called friendly hug? Being mindful of your body and being mindful how people interact with you. Someone who is there for you uh, will not hug you inappropriately. You will not feel anything uncomfortable. And if you did, they will ask and they, and they will make sure that they don't do it again. And, and those are the signs. And, and also for people to educate themselves. Educate yourself. Read up on predators. Read up on the dark side of the mind so you can understand that these are things that are happening in everyday life. For parents with your children... If your child is behaving in a way that is a little bit more promiscuous for their age, you notice for younger children if they're wetting the bed, for teenagers if they're acting out, that there is something going on. Those are signs of sexual abuse if children, if you see um, anxiety or they're, for parents where, where the kid is not wanting to go away from you or they don't want to go with someone, listen to that. Mm-hmm. They may not be telling you that something is wrong, but... It's a reason why they're clinging. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, all, all wow. those are good. I was listening. I thought you had a few more points. <laughs> <laughs> I was well, listening that's, that's all good. intently. Yeah, well, that's good. But I, I can tell you, I can go all day. It's so many signs. It, it, and the sad, and the sad part is, is that people don't know this, and the 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 rate in which sexual abuse happens is so so high. And, and people just don't understand it. They don't know. Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, it's, it, and sexual abuse, it, it, oftentimes people think, oh, it's just rape. But if you're touching me inappropriately or you're touching my genital mm-hmm. with children, if you feel like someone's bathing your child inappropriately, that's sexual abuse. It's yeah. sexual abuse. Mm-hmm. Because, again, mm-hmm. with, with, a, with a predator, it may not have to be actual intercourse. It can be things like inappropriate touching. Mm-hmm staring, wanting to, you know, watching them bathe. These are things that parents should look out for and understand that nobody is exempt and that oftentimes it is somebody you know. Mm -hmm. It's not the stranger, it's the uncle. 
It's the one that's in the house mm -hmm. that's babysitting. Mm -hmm. Some, and unfortunately, sometimes it's the dad. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's your husband. Mm -hmm. So understand that nobody is exempt. Be mindful. Look for the signs and believe in your children. When your children tell you that something is wrong or they can't express it, but they say, Mommy, I don't want to go with Daddy, mm -hmm. believe them. They don't want to go for a reason. You know, it's interesting, Margina, my husband and I, you know, we, we, I have a four-year-old son and I know we were talking to our son, you know, if somebody touched you, it don't matter who it is. And we were sharing with him that you probably, if that happens, it'd probably be somebody that you know. So we were trying to make him aware of that not just stranger danger, but a lot of times that happens. And I'm going to share this <laughs> live on the air because we was, you know, talking, you know, if somebody touch you, if they touch your wee wee, we told him what the proper name was and I put him in the <laughs> I put him in the car just today and I was like, okay, how was your day? Cause I was taking him over, picked him up from school, taking him over to his uh, daycare. And he said, it was a good day, mommy. No one touched my wee wee. <laughs> and I was like, good. good. <laughs> but we were teaching him, you know, good. if anybody touch you here, if anybody, you tell us, you let us know. And I'm like, okay, uh, well, I'm glad that that's good. That's good so, day. but I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> but we want him to know, yeah, you know good touches so and bad touches. <laughs> Also, one of the other um, education is even though we teach children the, you know, like the pet names of the wee wee, it's important to teach them the actual term. Oh, yeah. He knows the term. Because depending on where they're oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. So, because sometimes people say, you know, sometimes parents use pet names mm -hmm. for certain things. Mm -hmm. It's like teach them the actual term mm -hmm. because they may go tell somebody who doesn't know, you know, that certain pet name and then they, or, and they don't understand it. So it's also important to teach, um, you know, to teach children the actual term penis, vagina, mm -hmm. breast, these, these kind of things, mm -hmm. but so that they can understand. So if, if they do go and share or complain to someone who isn't the parent, this parent, you know, they, every, those terms are, you know, those are the actual terms sure. and those are universal versus sometimes when we use, you know, like pet names with kids, another adult may not under know that term or it may not be cultural for them. Right. So that's another thing for parents to know to, to just, we, to, you can always, right. We don't want to be overstimulating for our kids, but we also have to understand that at four years old, five years old, three years old, they're very much far more mature and oh, yeah. can understand and conceptualize mm -hmm. more than we would ever imagine. Absolutely. Well, he knows the proper names because me and my husband, we definitely mm -hmm. taught him those names, you know, so he does know penis. He does know vagina. So he know what they are in case somebody touched him. And I was talking to my husband because I had uh, taken a class and they were saying they need to know in case something does happen. And if the police ever talk to them, they need to know what the proper names are. So, you know, yeah. especially in the case of a, of a criminal case, something like that. So I thought that was really good. But Margene, I want to say thank you so much for yes. definitely coming on the show. If people wanted to research you, can you give me your website? What's your website? Yes. So it's www.marginacarter.com. So that's M-A-R-G-E-N-A. Carter.com. Margina with an E, people, not an I. <laughs> you can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at Margina Carter. Wonderful. Again, thank you so much. You were very enlightening, very informative. Thank we thank you so much for taking the time out to just really open that up to us and really unpack that because I know a lot of people are disturbed. And hopefully our Kelly does get the help that he needs. And my prayer is that he let those women go and send them back to their families. I know that all the families are going to need some help, you know, and some healing during this time. But thank you so much for just really opening up the mind of a predator to us. So thank you so much, Margina. And thank you so much for having me. I'd love to come back. You guys have a wonderful new year. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. And again, that's Miss Margina Carter. She is a psychotherapist, so she was really here to help us unpack what's going on, you know, with the whole R. Kelly situation. Although no one can ever really understand what's going on in the mind of a predator. But that is my prayer that he let those women go and that he definitely get the help that he needs. And the Lady Charmaine Live Show is sponsored by the Wealth Summit. It's a great Wealth Summit that's coming to Stockton, California. It's the Wealth Empowerment Summit. It's going to be a... Uh, Highlighting keynote speaker, she goes by the name of Miss Lisa Nichols. Make sure you go and get your tickets. All you have to do is go online to get your tickets today. And here's Miss Lisa. She's going to tell you more about it. As I was growing my life, transforming my business, I copycat game changers. And what I found out was game changers were always attending another summit. 
a place where they can grow, a place where they can expand, and a place where they can network. So I myself did the exact same thing. And I looked up one day and I was... Make sure you go online and get your tickets at catalystcommunityconnections.org. And again, that's catalystcommunityconnections.org. And let them know that Lady Charmaine sent you. And again, be sure to follow us on Instagram, also on Facebook Live. And we'll be there. So thank you so much for watching.